It's December 2014, and this is a wow signal burst. Number three, MISS on Mars. This burst is about a paper published last week in the journal Astrobiology by Dr. Nora Nofke, an associate professor at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. In her paper, she notes some key similarities between microbial mats seen on Earth and certain formations in rocks on Mars seen by the Mars Curiosity rover. And I'm just going to let her tell you the rest of the story. I'm with Dr. Nora Novka of the Old Dominion University, and we're discussing her recent paper in astrobiology, Ancient Sedimentary Structures in the Less Than 3.7 Billion Years Ago Gillespie Lake Member Mars that Compare in Macroscopic Morphology, Spatial Associations, and Temporal Succession with Terrestrial Microbialites. You've written extensively and even have a book out on microbial mats that are found all over the Earth. From my understanding of your bio, you've been all over the Earth looking at, at these things and other things like it. What got you interested in Mars? Yeah, I uh, uh, work on uh, plastic sediments in, in modern environments as well as in, in ancient ones, and, and I look for microorganisms that colonize those sediments, like, for instance, sand, like sand that we know from the beach. So I take a look how those microorganisms colonize those sands and how they interact with sedimentary processes, how they interact with erosion, with the position of sediment and so forth, and then what kind of structures are forming in those plastic sediments. So why is this important for, for Mars? Um, those sedimentary structures that are organisms in plastic sediments occur in the fossil record as well. That means we find fossil structures in very, very old rocks, in Archean rocks on Earth, in rocks that are beyond 3.5 uh, 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 billion years old. And of course, if we find those structures that are made by microbes on, on an ancient earth of that high age, um, we might find those structures on, on Mars as well in rocks of similar ages. And that means if we find structures like that, that there were microbes on Mars at that time as well. And that's what this paper is about, where I describe structures that resemble very strongly um, those microbial structures we know from Earth. Now, your paper talks about something called an MISS. Is that is that essentially what you just told us about? It was uh, the MISS is a, a fossilized microbial structure? Exactly. So MISS is the abbreviation for microbially induced sedimentary structure. That's this group of sedimentary structures that is formed by those microbes. Yes, that's correct. And we see these all over the, all over Earth. Yeah, those structures um, occur basically everywhere where we have microorganisms colonizing plastic sediments, and the most prominent ones are those. Um, uh, structures that are made by photoautotroph cyanobacteria. That they are very, very common. They occur everywhere along the shorelines of the oceans, in coastal zones, in shallow shelves, um, tidal flats, lagoons, along rivers. So all those places basically where there's water, where there's a plastic sediment like sand, and where there's light. In your paper, you talk about a structure on Mars called Gillespie Lake. Can you tell us what Gillespie Lake is? Yes, uh, the interpretation by the Curiosity team is that those sediments record an ancient playa or river system. And um, probably I should explain briefly what a playa is. A playa is a setting which is 
flooded by water, very shallow water, but it's drying out occasionally completely. There's a lot of salt in the sediments and, and in such settings on Earth, microbial mats are very, very common. And that was also the reason why I started to work on those sediments. The Gillespie Lake member is, is clastic and um, the environment seemed to me to be suitable for the search of, of ancient microorganisms that form like organic carpets, like really thick layers um, on top of those sediments. And, and that's, that's how, how I got interested in, in this rock uh, succession now, could you, on Mars. Could you describe to us uh, the similarities you see between uh, Gillespie Lake and a terrestrial MISS. Mm -hmm. Those microbial structures are very... So if you think of stromatolites, which are very well known, those are boulder-shaped, up-domed structures that, that are made by um, a bacteria. We, we know them also through the entire Earth history until today. Those MISS look a little bit different. You cannot see them very well. You really need to have a trained eye. They're different morphologies, but in general, those morphologies are in, in a way that one can see. Those sedimentary structures are not formed by what we call physical sedimentary processes alone. They're not formed by erosion or deposition. They are formed by something else. And the something else is what we call biostabilization. If you have a lot of microorganisms assembling on top of a sandy surface, they form, what I said before, an organic carpet. And I really mean carpet. So that's what we call a microbial mat. It's an assemblage of microorganisms which is very, very cohesive. It is really like a mat. You can roll this up like a carpet. Um, and, and of course, if you have something like that growing on the surface of a clastic deposit, that affects erosion, which means water that crosses the sand cannot erode the sand away anymore, and a certain sedimentary structure is formed. That looks different from sedimentary structures that would form if we would have water indeed affecting the sands. Like, for instance, ripple marks would form. And everyone knows ripple marks. If you walk along a beach, you see ripple marks all over the place. Um, so they are very distinct. One needs to have a tra trained eye to see that. What do you see in the, that sandstone in Gillespie Lake? Does that remind you of a microbial mat? Right. Yes, yeah. So there are distinct um, uh, structures, distinct MISS, like, for instance, fragments of microbial mats, so centimeter scale, flat clasts that are actually made by um, micro uh, microbial mats. Um, they they are formed by, by sand grains, so they're bound together by this organic matrix of the microbial mat. Um, then there are roll-ups, which are... Um, fragments, flat class that are rolled up, or we have a structure which is called erosional remnant and pocket. That's a surface relief which is composed of two elements. One part of the surface is is some centimeters high and the surface is, is planar, it's flat topped. And then there are deeper lying surface areas which are ripple marked. Those are areas where microbial mats were eroded away and the sand which was originally beneath the microbial mat is now exposed and can be um, affected by currents. So those are the things that, that I see on the Gillespie Lake. Um, a member, and, and that's something we, we know from Earth as well. So your hypothesis is that these could be billions of years old fossils of microbial mats then. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think that could be tested? Yeah, that's a very good question. So what I present in this paper is a very thorough study of macroscopic morphologies, which means I describe the structures, how they look like, how high they are, how, how, how wide they are, and so forth. And I compare those structures visually with structures we know from Earth. That was my first step. And then by doing so, I found out that actually those structures form spatial associations, which means certain structures occur together as a group and only in certain environments. 
And those associations, exactly the same, we know from Earth as well, where those microbial structures occur together um, in certain settings. And then also I show in my paper that those structures change over time. That means that the, micro, the microorganisms that formed those structures originally were affected by a change in the environment. And specifically, the, those structures record that the Playa Lake was first present and then it dried out over time. So I have three lines of evidence that I present in the paper and I said, well, but we need more, of course. I cannot say I have images from Mars and I can conclude for sure that those are fossil microbial mats. So what I like, what, what I recommend for NASA to do to the Curiosity team is to do some geochemical and mineralogical measurements of the deposits in situ with the use of, for instance, you know, Rover Curiosity could do that with an X-ray spectrometer or with uh, the ChemCam and and other instruments or the um, the sample analysis at Mars and SAM. So it um, to to really figure out if we do a close up of those structures, are there any signals that tell us that the sediments within those structures differ from the host sediments? Um, for instance, we may look, you know, are there certain minerals that occur only in those structures or are, is there even some organic preserved, maybe even a bacterial filament or something like that? Um, so that's my um, my recommendation, what, what should be done. Uh, have you had much reaction from the Curiosity team yet? No, um, not at all. I informed them about my my idea, so to say, in in May this year, and I said I'm I'm going to work on this. And I wrote up this this report, which we just uh, published now. Um, but we had uh, just this week the AGU meeting, so the paper came out on last. Thursday and everyone had had left already for the AGU meeting, oh. so I have uh, have not heard back anything uh, yet. Have you seen uh, similar structures to Gillespie Lake uh, anywhere else on Mars, or is this the first incident you're aware of of something like this? Um, yeah, I studied all, in the meantime all images obtained by Curiosity. Um, I mean, they are just wonderful images. I really enjoy doing that. Um, and the the um, the structures at the Gillespie Lake are really the best ones. They're the best preserved ones. It's a nice suite of structures. It's not only one or two, it's many. Um, there are some other sites where I would say that could be microbial as well, but it's the preservation is very poor. And and so I would not even dare to 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 write a scientific report about about that. That would be too uncertain. I'm hoping we'll hear back from the Curiosity team soon that they're going to go back over there. And uh, this this is a uh, quite near Yellowknife Bay where they made the uh, the recent announced recently announced discovery of uh, of organics. So uh, yeah, I, I think you, it's probably uh, a few steps away from it if you were standing on on the surface. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that, and and that's quite interesting. The sheep bed member, that's where they did those measurements, is the rock unit which is just beneath the Gillespie Lake. So it's it's part of this rock succession. Um, it would be nice if they would have organic molecules um, that show. Ah, okay, good. The Gillespie um, could be then of biological origin as well. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time, and and I hope we'll be able to follow up with you soon about any findings that Curiosity's made with regard to the Lesbian Lake. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. This has been Wow Signal Burst 3. For more information, please go to Wow Signal Podcast. Dot com. Music is by Jason Robinson, used with permission. The Wow Signal podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike license. <laughs>